I'm real smart about uh, stretching my dollar on the thing. So if I gotta go to the swap meet, you know what I mean, to buy stuff for the low, if I gotta buy stuff from Amazon and just find the cheapest prices, then you'll be amazed by some of the stuff I found on Craigslist. I mean, I'm talking about business equipment, mm. you know, and, and if you're a person that's in business, that's a great place to start. Let's say you're starting up your new salon. It don't make sense to buy brand new chairs and all that if you don't have it in your budget. There's, there's always another business that's closing who has some pretty good condition equipment that you can find and buy it for the low. It only makes sense. That's that's what it's about. Buying for the low. That's you starting out. I'm always looking for, for bargain deals. You know, go to shop. I shop at consignment stores. Yeah. Get, get like, some furniture from the dealership. Yeah. From another business, one out. Yeah. 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 I got some furniture like like that. I do that. That's smart. Yeah. And I've seen people start a new business. They spend a whole like days and weeks on buying office furniture, trying to make sure that the, 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 the core is all right. And it's too many times entrepreneurs spend too much time on making on the product and not enough time on the marketing of the product mm -hmm. so that they're actually getting sales, like right. a money-making activity. You know? Yeah, that's dope. Inventory and advertising might be the biggest things to probably worry about starting off. Inventory and advertising, getting good product and selling good product, getting it out there to mm -hmm. sell. After that, I'll probably say record keeping. So just keep track. Uh, one of my managers told me back in the day, you can't manage what you don't measure. You know what I'm saying? You can't manage what you don't measure. Measure everything so that you know how to manage it. Because what gets recorded definitely gets rewarded. That, that's one thing that I learned when I was still in corporate. Everything we did was tracked. Everything. In fact, not only was it tracked, it was projected. You have to project, so you can project what's going to happen. You have to project what was going to happen. Every day we did was called stand up. So all of the sales reps, we would get together, stand in front of a white uh, whiteboard, and you had to say what your production was going to be for that day. You had to get your numbers. Right. So it was like, I'm going to do six, three, and one. I mean, I'm, I'm going to uh, try to set six appointments. I'm going to do three interviews, and I'm going to enroll one person. And in order to do that, I'm going to make 150 phone calls. And you, every day, you had to say that, and then the next day, you have to say how did you, how did you did right? How you know, did you get what you had set out to do? Better than I would have thought because I didn't have any experience at all. Mm -hmm. But what I did, I looked at who were the two top people that were there, mm -hmm. and I found the top, actually the top guy, who was the number one enroller, and I would just watch him. I would whatever little tricks he was doing, I would incorporate those that's, tricks. That's I would I would I would go out to lunch with him. You know, as if we were friends. We weren't friends, but I would say, man, let's go to lunch. And I would just talk to him about, hey, how do you do this? You know, how do you do that? So because I would hang with the top people, success, you know, kind of just, you just shined on me a little bit. Right. You know, like we had about 30 different reps and I was probably number five out of the mm. 30. Mm. No. Company and connections. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you start a new business or when you start at a new gig, your first 90 days, you might create a lot of success. What happens is after that first 90 days, you go through a slump sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I was doing so good. Why am I going down? Like what happened? What I found, it's about sticking to the basics. Like when I would first start that gig, everything I did was the basic. It was, I had, a, I had a certain agenda. I followed my agenda. I had a checklist. I followed my checklist. As long as I stick, I stood to the basics, I was really able to, I got a certain result. Mm -hmm. But then, because I was so successful, I started thinking it was me. So I started adding my own little flavor to it. It's like when kind of when you, you're making, you're making a hamburger, you know, and you make a good burger. And so now you say, well, let me add some extra seasoning. Let me add some extra you're sauce. too much. And now you're doing too much, you know? And, and that's what I find sometimes that if you're not tracking your progress and you're not doing the basics, it's hard to tell what you're doing wrong when things are going wrong. That's that, that, that's definitely real. You gotta track it. I even think about myself with cars, right? That when I opened up a lot, it was in a, a changing demographic. It took us a while just to find out what cars are selling in this part of town. In that market, yeah. In that market, you know? So one, I wanna say is, are you gonna be able to be open long enough 
do you find to find your success? Uh -huh. That's a great point. Are you going to be able to stand down and hold it down while you're searching to find what sells, what doesn't sell, what's fast selling, what's slow selling, what is your customer base like? Are you going to be able to do that? And then two, just to go to the point that, you know, you know, revert back to the point that you are saying though, once you find it, are you recording that the whole time so that you know what mistakes to make and I mean what mistakes not to make anymore? Mm -hmm. Pivotal points. I, I, I want to piggyback on that point with an example that I saw recently. So, husband and wife couple. Mm -hmm. The wife wanted to, she wanted to do hair and sell hair. Mm -hmm. Her husband, he's the breadwinner, he's got a lot of money. So they say, let's go in business together. We're going to open up a boutique. And the husband, because he had the money, he wanted to call all the shops. Problem is, he doesn't know anything about hair or the boutique game. He's getting his money from something else, but he's trying to call shots and, 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 and something he knows nothing about because he's putting the money up. So they find this beautiful location by downtown Chicago, right by USC. They're there for six months, great location. People are coming in a little bit, it's kind of inconsistent. The numbers aren't what the husband wanted them to be, so they shut down the business. If you have a brick and mortar business, sometimes it might take a while before people consistently even get to your store, because they gotta trust you, they gotta see you there long enough to say, hey, okay, I see y'all been here, so now I, now I wanna shop with y'all. Yeah. If you're just there for a couple months or something, most people, they'll, they might not even trust the business yet. Yeah, indeed, indeed. You have to be there. I mean, it's a, it's a concept that I just, you know, kind of came into fruition with recently because when I first started off, I started selling like uh, decent cars, oh, uh -huh. you know, mid-range cars. My demographic didn't want those type of cars. Mm -hmm. No, I'm like, I'm Chicago Luxury Motors. Let's luxury this mother. Yeah. Get out. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I flipped a lot with BMWs and Benzes. Everybody loved them. Everybody coming a lot loving those cars. Yeah. We flooded with traffic. Yeah. Nobody can afford them. So now I'm sitting on these luxury cars for months because mm. nobody can afford them when they can't get finance for them. I'm like, damn, well, that's not it. Yeah. So now I had to introduce a whole new aspect, but now we're looking at like five months now, six months now. Now I've been hoping that we haven't, we were selling here and there, but we're not really moving consistent product. Isn't it, it wasn't recently to just recently, last month or two, that we've been consistently moving product because I had to go through these trial and error. Just just going back to what your story, don't quit before it's your time, you know? Yeah. And that's what, what I want to reiterate to a lot of the female entrepreneurs too. Don't quit because it's not popping right off bat. Nothing that's good comes overnight. You know, so you have to stick in there until you find that niche. Now, once you find that niche and you're operating decently and you're still not able to be successful in that business and still not making up, then that's when you'd be like, you know what, maybe it's time to reinvent the wheel or do something different or maybe it's not for me. But until then, until you even found the core of your business, don't quit because you haven't even explored all opportunities.